Previously on The Bill. Alan said I ever contacted my mum again, he'd hit her. You say what you like about Alan, it was Lucy that attacked him, almost killed him. I just think that you got a bit too involved in this one, you know, a bit too close. This is not all bad. In. He was on his way back from work when he hit the body. Well, here is she fell. No, she's already in the road. Yeah, you better tell the traffic news people this place is going to be closed down for a few hours. Yeah, what have you got? We ain't got anything much yet, to be honest. I identified the victim. What's her name? Burton, Lucy Burton, what? 17. Well, honey, you shouldn't be here. I'm fine, but I'm only. Only what? You wouldn't be taking one of the men back to the nick if it was someone they knew. We're treating them with kick gloves, so don't, don't do it with me. Mr Marlowe? What is it? What's wrong? I'm afraid it's bad news. It's Lucy. Her body was found by a motorway bridge this morning. And we have reason to believe that it was Lucy. She's killed herself. Last night at the police station, that that would be the, the last time that I would see. <laughs> what time is that? What are you asking that for? I'm sorry, but we have to piece together a picture of what happened to Lucy last night. My wife was at the cop shop. Came to pick me up from the hospital. We came back here, and we were here all night, together, watching the telly, weren't we? Worse and more than that smell, is it? Well, a locker room after a full shift. Hey, 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 can you two have some respect? Try and remember where you are, yeah? Yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, reel them in. <laughs> right. So, what do we got? Uh, something about the site didn't seem right. Like what? Well, I spoke to the traffic and he said that road was no different to any other road in London. Lucy's body wouldn't have laid there long without being involved in some sort of collision. Lucy's body was involved in the collision. The geese that collided and we called it in. The lividity record suggests that she'd been dead for a number of hours before we found her. Which means she couldn't have jumped off the bridge, she must have been dumped off it. Exactly. Well, as you can imagine, she was in a bit of a mess. But a preliminary exam has uncovered some pretty severe bruising. Well, that's not surprising if she was dumped off a bridge and then hit by a car. No, 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 no. These bruises were sustained before she died. Uh, the blood had settled. And um, we also know that Lucy had recently had sex. Okay. All right. Well, thanks, Eddie. So, we're definitely saying this isn't suicide, right? Yeah, I'd stick my reputation on it. Is Mark here? He's working at the soup kitchen. What is it? What's wrong? Is there something wrong? Come on. Go inside. Sit down. This morning we found the body of a young girl. Sorry, I'm afraid Lucy's dead. Oh my God! What do you mean, dead? Who? Huh? I think she was murdered. Do you want to go upstairs? Talk about it. Who's going to tell Mark? Well, I can if you want me to. Would you mind? Uh, I don't think I could handle it at the moment. He'll be devastated. He was so pleased to have Lucy in his life. So this is what you call helping you with your inquiries, Sergeant? Well, sir, we just need to piece together... Yeah, a picture of what happened last night, yeah. Young Copper said that earlier. You think I did it? Why would we think that? 
I couldn't stand the girl, you know that much. She made things very difficult between me and her mum, you know that much. And you know that she attacked me yesterday and put me in hospital. You would do well to remember who's the victim in this scenario. You think I did this to myself? Oh, well, Lucy's dead, Mr. Marlowe. So you might forgive us for thinking that you would bear a grudge. Now, where were you last night? Like I said before, at home. Doing what? You know, wondering how my stocks and shares were getting on, where we're going to holiday this summer. Reading the paper, watching telly. Right. And Fiona was with you all night? Yeah. How did it happen? How did she die? We haven't been able to establish the cause of death yet, I'm afraid. But you said she'd been murdered. I mean, you must know how. This might be hard for you to hear. It can't be any worse than what I'm already thinking. <laughs> the pictures in my head. The injuries that her body sustained in the fall <laughs> have so far masked the cause of her death. Are you okay to go on? <laughs> so you were with Alan all night? I couldn't get rid of him. If I went to make a cup of tea, he'd follow. And I needed some space to clear my head, so I went up to bed. But he was up after me in two minutes. Look, I think we can leave it there. Why don't I get someone to take you home? Will you release Alan now? I mean, at the same time as me. Oh, yeah. I mean, you've given him an alibi. There's no reason for us to keep him here. You're a bit late for soup and a roll, you're after, Beth. What is it? You okay? Yeah, is there somewhere a bit more private we can talk? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what is it, Beth? It's Lucy. Yeah? I'm afraid she's dead. Dead? Yeah, we've had to launch a murder inquiry. Look, Kim and Sarah are at home and they, they really need you there, Mark. Come on, let me take you. Yes. So, what's happening, Mr. Marlowe? Oh, we've got two things for you. First, we know that Lucy used her cash card at 11 o'clock last night. The CCTV footage wasn't very clear, but we could tell that she would do £40. Pounds. Well, a cash card was in her purse, and so were two twenties. So that rules out robberies tonight, I'm afraid. We also did a search on the area surrounding Alan and Fiona's house. We looked for CCTV coverage in the surrounding streets. We came up with this. Yeah, we know that Alan Marlowe discharged himself from St Hughes at 20 to 9 last night. His wife took him home. Now, Alan claims that he didn't leave the house until we brought him into the station this morning. Right, this footage is from Alverton Park, which is near the Marlowe's house. It was taken at 11.22 last night. There's Fiona Marlowe. She was there for almost an hour before this happened. Thank you, Zalba. So I went to the park. Next thing I know, Alan's there, wants to take me home. How long were you out of the house? I couldn't say. Maybe a couple of hours. Do you know where Alan was while you were apart? Do you think he's capable of murder? Why else would he ask me to lie to you? And if he could kill Lucy, I knew that he could kill me too. I was... I was scared. I went out for a drink. Left here about half nine. Stayed until last orders. Which pub? Carver Street. The Green Archer. Sarah? My diary. I was on my own when I'd finished. Lucy had already gone out. Yeah, I think I was the last one to see Lucy. About ten o'clock just before I went to work. She said she was going out, but she didn't mention where she was going. And how did she see him before you left? <sighs> she was tired more than anything. I mean, she'd had one hell of a day. Poor Lucy. I think she was just glad to be back with us. Right, well, I think that's all I need. Let me make you a little cup of tea, yeah? Cold. Cool. 
Let me do that first. I know you only met yesterday, but I could see that you cared for Lucy. You could see the good in her. Like we could. Oh, I should do that. Should you? Why's that? You've got a big heart, Beth. I need to sort a few things out at work. Get another volunteer into cover for me. I can come and look after these girls properly. I don't know. What, what do you think? Hey! Hey! You two! Oh, latex man. He's got the gloves on still. Eddie. We found a match on the DNA database. Lucy had had sex with a Mark Lawrence. Mark Lawrence? Yeah, I'd say I'm about 99% sure of that. Thank you, Eddie. That's very helpful. Don't argue with figures like those, can you, boys? <laughs> Eddie, I'm so gonna have to arrest you one day. <laughs> now, listen, did Beth say that Mark and Lucy were an item? No, but he wouldn't publish that, would he? 27-year-old man sleeping with a 17-year-old girl. This is a girl he bet to his voluntary work, too. A girl he'd saved from the streets. So. Right, I'm gonna get Beth to do some digging, then we'll let Alan know that his alibi's fallen through. All right. See you. Yep. Beth, it's Dears Turner, but don't tell anyone that. I told you not to call me while I was at work. Talk. Yeah, go on. Okay, now I just found out that Mark had sex with Lucy before she died. Are you serious? Yeah, is Mark there? No, he's gone to find someone to cover him at work. Okay, I want you to do some digging, see what you can find out about the pair of them. And how am I supposed to do that? Well, I don't know, you're gonna think of something, aren't you? Okay, bye. Fine, I'll find it. That's Mark's room. You're quite close here, aren't you? It must be difficult living in a shared house. You can't get much space. We respect each other's privacy. Well, say I lived here. I'd been out and I'd pulled. You'd know, wouldn't you? It'd be red faces around the breakfast table. Yeah, I mean, it can get a little awkward at times, but you just make yourself scarce. Head up the pub or whatever. You were there last night. Come on, who got lucky? Was it Mark? It's always the quiet ones, eh? What was she like? It was Lucy, actually. They went to his room about half nine. Oh, I, I didn't realise they were together. Were they a proper couple? It might have just been a one-off. Listen, uh, Mark will be home soon, so... I thought fear backed me up. Why? She loves me. Says she'd do anything for me. By agreeing not to see her daughter. Keep you still when you lay into her. Well, you fancy your chances with me, do you? Hitting a man, that'd be a first, wouldn't it? So, where were you? I woke up, Fiona was gone. I was worried, I went looking for her. End of. Worried? You were worried? Now, you see, that doesn't say worry to me. I says angry, very angry. So who wound you up that much then, Fiona or Lucy? I told Fiona I keep stum, not make a statement on condition that from now on it'd just be the two of us. Yeah, but she wouldn't let it go, would she? Even after what Lucy did to you. The minute she laid eyes on her again, it was that old mother-daughter thing kicked in, didn't it? Must have really riled you up there, huh? I mean, two women in the same day who wouldn't do what they were told. I mean, a big man like you should really be able to keep control of his women. So you went to see Lucy because you wanted to teach her a lesson? No. How dare this little girl disrespect you so much? Yeah, she never knew when to keep her mouth shut, when to back off. No. What else is a man to do? I mean, just sit there and take it? You wanted to get her back for what she did to you yesterday. She started hitting her, and you kept hitting her until... No! We're on to you. Uniform officers are right now checking your story, and if you're lying to us, you're in deep. I don't believe a word that geezer says. <laughs> Hopefully this is the news that means we're going to lock him up and throw away the key, well? Oh, good. Picked up Helen's car on Hilbert Street at 2210 last night. The two other sightings on Railco Street at 2230 and 2245, and then another one on Oswald Drive at 2315. Four roads around the Marlow house. Yeah, three separate sightings. We've been able to build a picture of his movements. He did circuits of the area until 20 past midnight when a camera picked him up at Alverton Park. Yeah, Fiona said he came home after that and stayed until the morning. All right, we need a fresh pair of eyes on this. Joe! 
Come in it. Oh, excuse me. Beth. Okay. Sorry, is this the Lucy Burton case? Yeah. We might have to start from scratch if we've got to let our prime suspect go. Listen, I need you to help me sort out some protection from his wife, Liz. Sure, I've got a contact at a woman's refuge if Fiona's up for that. I think she might be OK. Busy. Right, Beth says that the girls did know that Lucy and Mark were sleeping together. The last time they saw Lucy was at 9.30 when she and Mark went off into his bedroom. So could Mark Lawrence be a suspect? Yeah, she also said she found some interesting-looking tapes in his bedroom. OK, so if Mark Lawrence... And Lucy Burton were having a sexual relationship, and he was the last person to see her alive. Beth also said that Mark's been missing for the last hour, and that he told her he was going to find someone to cover for him at work. Did we let the real killer get away? OK, Joe. Yeah, I'll tell her. CCTV footage has given your husband an alibi. So you'll release him? You let him go? It looks that way, yeah. But I, I, I can't live with him, I can't. One of my colleagues has found a place for you at a woman's refuge. But he'll find me. I mean, last night wasn't a one-off. He always manages to track me down. It's out of town. I can give you a lift to the station. I'll be two minutes out then. I haven't got much. Gov, look at the tapes we found in Mark Lawrence's bedroom. They're of all the girls having sex with Mark. Mark Lawrence was sleeping with Lucy Burton, Sarah Fuller and Kim Law and some girl called Ellie. What worries us most, though, is that most of these girls seem to come from very difficult backgrounds. Lucy, you know, Sarah Fuller's got a history of drug abuse and serious mental health issues. Kim Law also had a very difficult home life. It's obviously got a type. Yeah. Ellie's the only name we don't recognise, however, the dates on the tapes suggest that they were still together a few weeks ago. You think she must be Lucy's predecessor? The dates also tell us that all of the girls were sleeping with Mark around the same period. Lucy's the only one that's not on the sex tape. Any sign of it? Can't wait to hear what he has to say about his neat little setup at home. Well, there's no sign of Mark's car today or on any of the CCTV cameras found from last night. Keep me posted, will you? But we did cross reference the index with ones found on the ANPR cameras heading in the direction of Park Parade Bridge. Now his car was in the vicinity of 5 to 5, that's just before we found Lucy's body. We checked with the soup kitchen. They can confirm that he was there last night, but he works out on the streets, so they can't guarantee that he was there for the whole night. OK, Joe, run a background check on Mark Lawrence, also run a trace on Ellie. Right, we need to bring these other girls in. 795 from Sierra, Carl Fire, Tether Street. Can you attend? Forward to the kitchen. OK, Sarah, we, we discovered some tapes in Mark's bedroom, and um, some of these tapes, quite intimate tapes, and in one of them. One of them was in me. Yeah, I know. So you were aware that he was filming you? Of course I was. What kind of man do you think he is? Well, that's what I'm trying to find out. So were you also aware that he was sleeping with other women, filming other women? We choose to sleep with is none of your business. We keep it among ourselves and the family. And family? That's, um... So this is a family that's made up of vulnerable women, of women who struggle to survive? You aren't struggling anymore. If I hadn't met Mark, I don't think I'd be here. I don't think I'd have made it. But Sarah, you were clean when you met him. I was. He gives me the strength I need to stay clean. How? Security. Unconditional love. That's unconditional love with three women. That's, um... That's unconditional, unconventional. It works for us. If you think it's unconventional, that's your problem. You see, it's this image of Mark that you're presenting which doesn't exactly tally with the one that we're getting of him. Because he befriends this girl, 17 years old, and he makes her an offer. Lodging and board in exchange for sex and a starring role in one of his home movies. Then this girl ends up dead, murdered, and he disappears. So you can understand why we might be a little bit suspicious of him. He wouldn't do that. He wouldn't kill anyone, and he would never leave us. But he has left you. It's definitely Mark Lawrence's car, Sarge, so it's not looking too good for forensics. Will do. DS Turner said we should wait for the fire brigade to turn up. We also have to get CSC to photograph the car in situ and then see if we can find any witnesses. Quickest way to get rid of any DNA evidence. Yeah, well, uh, might have a better chance of catching now he's on foot. Kim, I've been going through your file and 
I noticed that you were registered as a misper, yet you didn't want to have any contact with the people that were looking for you. So, I asked myself, why would a 15-year-old girl leave home, travel over 200 miles away? Why would she put that much distance between her and her family? My father raped me for a number of years. He said I was his special girl, that I wasn't ugly, like other people said. I believed him. Then I grew up a bit, learnt what he was doing was wrong, not normal. I still waited. And when I knew I could look after myself, knew I could survive, I left. End of story. So how does Mark fit into all this? We got friendly and he offered me a room at his place. He saw me for who I am. He told me I was beautiful. Was part of the deal sleeping together? There was no deal. We were friends first. Lovers later. A lot later. So he got your trust first? It was my decision. I don't think it's quite as straightforward as that, is it? Isn't it? That's your opinion. All right, let me ask you this. If you weren't in the mood to sleep with Mark, would you be able to tell him that? I mean, could you tell him that? Where is he, Kim? Or should I ask Ellie? Maybe you should. Why did she move out? They stopped loving one another. It can happen to anyone, DC Perkins. I've heard it even happens to people in normal relationships. I think things didn't go too well with Kim and Sarah. Best taking them both home, maybe she'll have more luck. Mark Lawrence's car was found burnt out, so if he did use that to dispose of the body, then... Knows his forensics, doesn't he? No DNA, no evidence. I've been doing a bit of digging on young Master Lawrence. His parents were killed in a car accident, and he was placed in the care of a lady called Doreen Hopper. According to social services, he stayed with her until a few weeks before his 16th birthday. I've also got an address for Ellie. She's not exactly gone up in the world. It was logged that she was taken to hospital last week. She had a DNC, that means dilation and curatage. It's a standard procedure following a miscarriage. Only in this case, she'd attempted to give herself a kind of at-home termination. She was 16 weeks pregnant. No process of getting a new father, is there? Right, I'm going to speak to Ellie. You talk to the social worker. Oh, thanks, Joe. Don't mention it. No, really, don't mention it. So thanks for agreeing to see me, Ellie. I wanted to speak to you briefly about Mark Lawrence. What did you want to know? Well, we're investigating the murder of a young girl called Lucy Burton, and I wanted to find out a little bit more about her relationship with Mark. Lucy? Yeah. You, uh, well, she took her to your place, right? Your room. Mark wouldn't have anything to do with your murder. He's... He's... He's brilliant. He's a really great guy. This, um, us splitting up, it's just a blip. So why did you move out? Well, you know, Mark was right. Uh, I was going to have a family of my own. Someone would need me. Lucy had nobody. He thought, we thought it'd be a good idea if she took my room. So you and Mark are going to get back together, eh? Yeah. I'm sure of that. You know, we do this a bit. Sometimes we're together, then we're apart. Being alone makes me realise how much it means to me. So you realise you're not coping? Well, usually I'm, I'm on top of things. You know, we know about the baby, Ellie. The time wasn't right. And we had it all. Had it made. Why ruin that? Risk our happiness. You got someone you can talk to? I'll be okay. I don't need anyone else. Okay, well, if you do, if you do, then you can call me. Cool. Thanks.
Won't be long. I've got to talk. To who? Who's here? Oh, no one. She's talking to Mark. He's not here. She's online. We've got a room set up with a computer. Do you mind if I... Sure. When Mark's not here, we're still connected to him. We talk to him, tell him what we're thinking. I know you'll explain everything when you get back, but... It's all going wrong. I miss you and I love you. That's all. You shouldn't be in here. You know the rules. Has Lucy ever used this? It's private. Mark is the only one who watches. I understand, but this could really help my colleagues. It could clear Mark's name. I must say, I'm not surprised to hear that name after all these years. So you remember Mark, do you? I don't want to give you the wrong impression. He wasn't a bad boy or anything. For years he lived with me. Didn't have any problems at all. So just a normal kid then? Well, I don't like using that term. What's normal? All right, point taken. Before I came here, I went through his records. I noticed that a couple of weeks before his 16th birthday, you surrendered him to social services. It's a bit unusual, isn't it? Uh, about a year before he left, I took in a couple of girls, twins, ten years old. And he was having problems at school. He wasn't getting on with kids his own age. They seemed to get on. I was pleased. They were happy. He was like a, I don't know, an older brother to them. But it was obvious after a few weeks he had a hold over them. Do you know what he said to them to keep them in line? They came from a very troubled background. I think he just reinforced their fears. It's a big bad world out there and they were better off with him. He was told not to have any contact with them. But of course, it's obvious he did. He couldn't let go. I mean, some days they'd be so overexcited. I knew that he contacted them somehow. It must have been very difficult for you. Not as difficult as when it all stopped a few years later. Very suddenly, judging by their reaction. They were so distraught, they were determined to end it all. We got to Elizabeth. Ellie, the strongest of the two, are just in time. Is this one here? Is she Ellie? No, do you recognise her? Is she something to do with this investigation? Is she all right? I'm sorry, there's, uh, there's nothing I can tell you right now. Will you let her know I'm here? She needs me. I always knew she'd track him down eventually. Interesting viewing? Uh, disturbing, if anything. These files have been taken from Mark's computer. There's this sort of room where the girls go to talk to him. It's weird. I know you said I was beautiful. That you can see through everything else. I... I don't feel like that. Not when you're not here. I just see what he saw. My dad. And I understand why he hurt me. Because that's all I'm good for. It's three in the morning and I can't sleep. I can never sleep when you're away. I need to be quieter, calm. And you know that. I can't. When you're coming home... God, the other two are driving me around the bend like two old women always on my case. Tidy this, tidy Soon, rescue me. <laughs> and then, if you go back a few weeks, I know it's going to be really expensive, Ellie. but I've been saving up and I'm going to get a part time job so I can help out. This is my special gift for you. I can't wait to see your face when I tell you. <laughs> well, 
well, we know what happened in her case. And how? Neat trick, eh? Staying in touch even when he's not there. Is Ali coping without Mark? Well, whatever she's been through, she's still loyal to him. She's determined that their separation is just a break. She's in denial, if you ask me. Yeah, well, you know what? Maybe it's for the best, because she seemed content, happy even. She's been booted out of the only house she's ever felt safe in by the only man she's ever loved, and she's just lost a baby. And you're saying she feels happy? Give me a break. You think Mark's been in contact? Well, he's not touched his bank account. Savvy enough to know we'd be alerted. It's a bit of a loan report from his girls. But Lucy's dead. And Beth's with Kim and Sarah. That just leaves Ellie. But he's not going to take Ellie with him, is he? Because he needs to keep a low profile. Here we go. 795 from Sierra Oscar 7. Have you got her? Sierra Oscar 7 from 795. We've got her. She's packed a bag, so she obviously thinks she's going somewhere with him. I hate to think what she'll do if he abandons her again. Mm -hmm. When he abandons her again, do you? Looks like she's heading in the direction of the tube station over. Yeah, that's smart. She doesn't suspect a thing. OK, so this camera here is pointing to the northbound platform. Here she is. She looks lost. Right, we need to work out where she's headed. Not just so we can arrest Mark Lawrence, but I think someone needs to help Ellie. What do you mean? I just don't think she's going to be strong enough to cope this time. Ellie's bought a ticket to Dover or Bright. My money's on him heading towards Waterloo. There's a small station nearby Waterloo East and you can catch trains from there down to the south coast. OK. All right, Sal, so we're at Waterloo East now. Mark Lawrence, I'm arresting you for the murder of Lucy Ball. Do you have to say anything? But it may call me defence if you do not mention that. Tell me that you are alive in court, Angie. I'm going to have to arrest you too for assisting an offender, OK? Now we spoke to Dory. You didn't want me to go in. I don't understand. I can't lose him. I can't lose him again. Come on, let's go. Come on. Come on, let's go. You took some finding, Mark. Well, if I'd known you were looking for me, I would have... Did it not occur to you to tell anyone of your whereabouts, like where you were going, what you were going to do? No, why should it? I've got nothing to hide. I've got nothing to do with Lucy's death. Then why do a runner? <laughs> I didn't. I, I, I just needed some, uh, some space to get my head sorted. Well, I can see how your head would be chocker, given everything that's happened lately. Yeah, it's been a strain, yeah. yeah well, my heart bleeds for you. I didn't kill Lucy. I wouldn't. I couldn't. You can see how it looks from where we're standing, though, can't you? I mean, the amount of evidence against you is substantial. You were the last person to see Lucy alive. I, I, I didn't do it. The fact that you target vulnerable young women? I didn't do it. Then there's the tapes that we found in your bedroom. The computer files. This unusual setup that you have at home. The fact that your car was found set alight. That there are records of this same car travelling near the bridge where Lucy's body was found. It's not looking too good so far, is it, Mark? No comment. Oh, now. I had you down for being a little bit smarter than that. The last thing I would say in your shoes would be no comment. You know why? Because the prosecution are going to have a field day with that, aren't they? Now showing Mark exhibit KG1. It's a photograph of Lucy. The pathologist called this a frenzied and uncontrolled attack. We know that she was a bit of a wind-up merchant. But I don't think she deserved this, did she? She must have really rolled you up. These injuries were sustained before her death. After her death, she was treated like a piece of meat. Her body was thrown over the edge of a bridge across a very busy road. Whoever killed her did her an awful lot of damage before she died. She didn't die peacefully. In fact, her death was very much like her life. It was very violent and very painful. Mark's been arrested for Lucy's murder. Why would they arrest Mark? They 
stacks of evidence against him. Mark's not a killer. I know this is hard, but there's... No, Beth. It isn't hard, it's wrong. He wouldn't kill anyone that isn't in him. He was on the run, girls, and he wasn't coming back. That's a lie. He loves us. So he wouldn't leave us. When he was arrested, he had a one-way ticket to France. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, you set yourself up as some sort of philanthropist. You take in women like Sarah, like Kim, like Lucy and Ellie. These are women who've been abused in their own home by their fathers or their lovers, and then they walk into more of the same with you. I, I never abused any of them. I helped them. I saved them. At a price. We loved one another, all right? I wouldn't expect you to understand that. Very odd understanding of love, aren't you? <laughs> For the benefit of the tape, I'm now going to show Mark some clips. Mark, the first time that you left Ellie Rogers, you left her in such a state she tried to commit suicide. You knew how vulnerable she was, and yet when she fell pregnant, you just cast her aside. Baby wasn't in your plans, was it? So, you turned to your next lost cause, Lucy Burton. However, you let Ellie think that she could get back with you if she got rid of the baby. So you know what she did? She terminated it herself. Mm. She nearly bled to death. How does that fall into the caring, loving, saving Ellie Rogers? You even lied to her today. You told her that you were taking her away, that you were going to start a new life together. No, I asked her to buy one ticket. <sighs> Not two. She misunderstood me. She's a kid. She loves me too much. Too much? Yeah. How much is too much? Okay. Kim was repeatedly raped by her father, abused, told that she was worthless, told that she was ugly. So she left home. She lived on the streets for two years. That's how desperate she was to get away from him. What happens? She walks out of one abusive relationship and into another one with you. Why are you doing this? All I wanted to do was to protect them, was to love them. Don't! Don't! You got them to confess their hopes, their dreams, their worries, and their fears. And you played on those fears to get them to do what you wanted them to do. Now turn around and look and see what loving you did to these women. You don't like to lose control, do you, Mark? So what happened that night? Lucy and I slept together. And when I came downstairs to go to work, Sarah was acting weird. She always did with a new member of the family. She finds it hard. So I, I was comforting her. We were kissing. Lucy came down and she just freaked. I hadn't told her yet about me and Sarah, about me and Kim, about what we meant to one another. I went after her to explain this and she told me that she was going. She couldn't part with anything like that. She found it weird. Sarah, it's going to be fine. No, it's not. I'm not like Lucy was. I can't just walk away and leave everything we've got here. She was leaving. But she seemed so happy. I didn't want to lose Lucy. I loved her. She needed us. 
Sarah said it would be okay, so... I had to go to work. Why don't we sit down? Why don't you talk to him? Like you were doing before. He can't hear me. Mark set up this room so you could talk. Get things off your chest. He's listening. You'll be back, won't you, Mark? You wouldn't have left me. When I came back on my break, Lucy was at the foot of the stairs, twisted, broken. Sarah was halfway up. She was she was hysterical, like she used to be, before we found one another. She didn't like it when she saw me and you together. You saw that. I said. All it takes is a little time, a little adjustment. It might seem weird now. Everyone needs love and support, a sense of belonging. Mark made me feel like I was the only girl on the planet. The only girl? It's hard to explain though, isn't it? I'm not sure I'd know how. I tried my best to, but she just laughed. Just like the rest of them out there. They'd argued. Lucy wanted out, no matter how hard Sarah tried, she couldn't convince her to stay. She said she'd fallen. It was an accident. And why didn't you call the police? Because I had to help Sarah. Called me all sorts. Laughed at me. At us. She would never understand. She said she was going to go to your work, Mark. She was sure they'd be really interested to hear how you ran things at home. I could get into trouble. That's what I told her. I couldn't allow that to happen. She couldn't do that to us. So what did you do to help Sarah? Yeah. Yeah. I got rid of the body. We put her in the boot. I got a cash card and got some money out and put it in her wallet. I, I drove around. I just, I couldn't think, I couldn't think, I just, I found myself on the bridge. I, I swear, I had no idea she attacked her. I had no idea. I didn't want to lose what we had. You're the only one who keeps me safe. The only one who can keep me clean. I can't go back on the drugs that'd kill me. You understand that, don't you? I tried to get her to be quiet. I only wanted to talk to her, to tell her how you could help her. If I could show her what I was like before, before I met you, then maybe she'd understand. But she wouldn't stop. Wouldn't be quiet. Be quiet, be quiet, be quiet! He knows now, Sarah, and he'll understand. I'm gonna have to take you down the station. But you'll be fine. I'll come with you. You won't be on your own, okay? Will I go to prison? I can't do it again. I can't go back there, please. Please. Sarah Fuller, I'm arresting you. Please. Lucy Burton. To say anything, but anything you do say will be taken down and maybe used as evidence against you. Okay, okay. Thank you. Alright, I'm friendly place at last. Sarah's been arrested for murder. Oh, poor Sarah. You know, you stripped them girls of any self confidence or self worth they ever had. And you could have. No, you should have done the exact opposite. Beth. I didn't kill Lucy. No. But it's your fault she's dead. 
still. You'll have plenty of time to think about what you've done when you're in prison, providing the course of justice. And there'll be no women around to manipulate or to convince that you're their saviour. Good luck. You're going to need it. Next time on The Bill. I've got a pulse, get an ambulance. Blood. Thank you, come here! Chitano! This Mr. Myers really was hearing voices after all.